My name is Elizabeth Jansen, and I'm Assistant Professor of Flute at Texas A&M University, Kingsville. This video is part of a series of mini lessons designed to highlight practice techniques and approaches that you can use to better prepare for the 2014 Texas All-State Auditions. Today we're going to take a look at the first etude, number one in C major by Bach and how you can use patterns and even language structure to help you shape phrases and choose your breath marks. This etude poses a particular challenge to us as flutists because it was originally written for cello, which of course is an instrument that in no way breathes in the same way that we do. Furthermore, it's from the Baroque era, and Baroque music is notorious for its motoric rhythmic passages that seem to go on and on relentlessly. Which begs the question for us, where is the right place to interrupt this music to catch our breath? I think one helpful thing to remember, though, is that Bach was also a vocal composer, and he was fully aware that great music needs to breathe. In fact, when I'm working on a piece by Bach, I often add words or sentences, like lyrics, to the music because I feel like they help me better understand the ebb and flow of the music with the short pauses that I might add, such as commas or semicolons or maybe even something more final, like a period. The challenge, however, is to determine what's the right punctuation to use in each situation. Now, some of that will be determined by your expression, the character you choose, the goals that you set for yourself in the phrases, and also you'll feel more comfortable with these decisions as you get to know the piece a little bit better. But there are some clues embedded in the music that can help you make initial decisions about where you might want to breathe. To investigate that a little further, we're going to take a look at the beginning of the second half of this etude. The first couple of bars of the second half uh, give us some really powerful indications of where the right place to breathe is. Uh, we have a rhythmic pattern that is consistent for, through the first two bars to the downbeat of 31, steady eighth notes. We have a harmony that's outlined to the downbeat of 31, a dominant harmony. And we have a descending melodic line, so that direction continues consistently through the downbeat of measure 31. Together, these pose a really powerful argument that we want to connect those bars and avoid breathing there uh, until after the downbeat of 31. that gives a really wonderful sense of direction to the music. It's something that we're striving for in this piece. If I tried breathing in some of those eighth notes, which certainly I'm capable of doing, there's enough time, you'll see, however, that that adds a lot of weight to the music that we would like to avoid. It eliminates that sense of direction that we've developed without breathing. Now, I think it's even more apparent when we add words. And I know some of you might feel a little awkward with this. We're not all natural lyricists. But I'd really like to encourage you to try adding words to some of the phrases that you play, at least. Not only is it going to help you determine the right breath places, but I think it'll also help, you give, help give you a sense of character and expression for the music that you're playing. Now for today, for this phrase, the words I chose go like this. I like to run and jump and swing and play and have great fun. And you can hear how even when I use those words, they flow through to the word fun. If I tried breathing in the middle, it would sound very awkward. I like to run and jump and swing and play and have great fun. Now that gives us one sentence or phrase. But maybe this sentence actually continues. We can add a but to that sentence. And if I put words to that, then I might have, but I get so tired all the time. If I put those together, 
I like to run and jump and swing and play and have great fun, but I get so tired all the time. You can feel how it flows together, and you can feel how there's a brief pause, like a comma, after the word fun, but a more final pause after the word time. And that creates our sentence, two phrases strung together with a brief pause in the middle. So we might not want to breathe on the downbeat of 31 or after the downbeat, but rather wait until 32. And this is what it sounds like. After that sentence, the rhythmic pattern changes substantially to running 16th notes. I think that's another indication that it's a good idea to take a breath at that point in the middle of 32. And then we have these repeated phrases. And here you have a little bit more flexibility. If you wanted to put a larger break in the middle of the repeat and be more emphatic, or a smaller break and use an echo. That's fine. Just like in sentences, the way we say things, the emphasis that we use, can change uh, how we say it. So in summary, if you're unfamiliar with Baroque music or with the music of Bach, I think choosing your breaths and phrases can be a big challenge. Uh, sometimes this music just seems to go on forever and it's very difficult to determine where the correct breaks are. But you can look for clues and these occur in rhythmic breaks, changes in the rhythmic patterns. They occur by listening to harmonies. Uh, they also occur by following the direction of the melody. And you can identify all of these with your eyes and ears, but if you find yourself stuck then adding words to this music, even though it feels uncomfortable, can often help you make a decision as to how you want to shape the phrase and where the pauses will work best for what you're communicating. Good luck and happy practicing.